You know, the first line of your of your biography, or the capsule of presidents, will almost certainly be not something you did, but who you are, right. the first African-American president. Right. And yet, you're half white. You right. were raised by three white people, your mother and your two grandparents. Right. Uh, and an you, Indonesian you can throw and in And an Indonesian. <laughs> are you comfortable with this characterization of you? I am, actually. And, and uh, I, I write about this uh, in my first book. Fairly early on, I, I came to the realization, maybe as, as a young adult, that uh, the essence of the African American experience is we're a hybrid people. Uh, and b because the, the, the concept of race in America is not just genetic, otherwise the one drop rule wouldn't have made sense. It, it's, it's cultural. It's uh, this notion of uh, a people uh, who look different than the mainstream, uh, suffering uh, discrimination, uh, and for many decades, terrible oppression, but somehow being able to make out of that uh, a music and a language and a faith and uh, a patriotism and a belief in this project we call America that is unique. And, uh, and so for me to say that I'm African American doesn't preclude uh, you know, all the values that my mother and my grandparents taught me. Uh, it's entirely consistent with those values. Um, and so I didn't feel as if I had to go around advertising that I was of mixed race because um, I am an African and American and uh, very comfortable with that. There are many polls that show that at the end of your presidency, a majority of Americans think race relations have worsened. Yeah. Um, why do you think that is? Well, because we've had some very high profile uh, events that remind us that uh, you know, the tensions around race, uh, the fact of discrimination still exists. And uh, the, the thing that I always remind young people of though is there has been so much progress that you're surprised when you see discrimination. 30 years ago, it wasn't a surprise that the idea that there might be racial bias in policing or criminal justice reform, well, the average African American would have said, of course, <laughs> that, that's not, nothing new. Uh, the fact that young African Americans today feel pain and shock about this uh, is an indication of the degree to which we've moved the needle where we see it and we don't like it. Uh, and that's progress. So, so my view has always been that, uh, you know, something Dr. King said uh, during the course of the Civil Rights Movement when he was being told that all this agitation down south uh, was causing terrible uh, racial conflict. He said, no, sunlight's the best disinfectant. Uh, you know, when, when those folks were marching across uh, the Edmund Pettus Bridge, you could argue that race relations were worse, but in fact, race relations had improved to the point where not only could African Americans mobilize to march across that bridge, but when the TV cameras showed it, the entire country's conscience was awakened in a way that in prior years it might not have been. Do you think that some of the animus toward against you yeah. has been racial? And if, and if the answer is yes, it must enrage you. Um, you know, I, I think that what you've seen, somebody characterized this, I think, quite well, that um, conservative ideology exists independent of racial prejudice. Uh, there are people who dislike me because they think I'm a liberal, because they think that I represent uh, an expansion of federal power, 
and they're all about states' rights. Uh, they uh, worry about um, high taxes, and they'd be just as mad if a white president they thought was uh, somehow encroaching on their liberty when it comes to guns, right? So, so there are a whole series of issues why people would be upset uh, regardless of my race. Uh, I think there's no doubt that the way uh, the, con the conservative movement has evolved inside the Republican Party over the last several decades, that those non-racial ideological objections have uh, interacted with you know, a, a long-term set of concerns about um, people who are different, whether it's African Americans or immigrants or Muslims. Um, I think there's a reason why uh, you know, attitudes about my presidency among whites in northern states are very different from whites in southern states. So you know, are, are, are there folks who, whose primary concern about me has been that I seem foreign, the other? Uh, are, are those who champion the birther movement, <laughs> you know, feeding off of uh, bias? Absolutely. Um, you know, on the other hand, are there folks who were also excited and probably voted for me because they were excited about an African-American president and might have been more critical of me if I hadn't been, uh, certainly within the African-American community. Um, and I, I think it is important just to, to recognize that you know, I did get elected with the majority of the vote twice, uh, and that gives you a sense of the degree to which uh, the overwhelming majority of, uh, of the American people are fair-minded and judge me on the merits and not uh, on the basis of race. And, uh, and that's probably why I don't get enraged. Uh, you know, there, there are times where I might get a little irritated, but I try to keep it to myself.